right friends welcome back to learning space this is press information bureau news in detail for the week 29th may to 4th june and during the past 3 4 weeks several ministries are coming up with the achievements of the present government that means achievements during the past 3 years so some of the issues which are very important for upsc preliminary examination are covered here right the first one is the chairman north eastern council and donor minister donor means development of north eastern region dr jitendra singh he chaired the 66th plenary of north eastern council here the most important aspect is zonal councils from examination perspective zonal councils there are five zonal councils which were established based on states reorganization act of 1956 so what is the main purpose the main purpose is given here matters of common interest in the field of economic and social planning issues concerning interstate transport any matter concerning border disputes all these are expected to be discussed under the zonal councils meeting and two important points please don't forget these five zonal councils which were established based on state reorganization act known as central zonal council southern western eastern northern and these five are headed by the union home minister whereas there is one more north eastern council so whatever we have discussed under five zonal councils are headed by the union home minister whereas the north eastern council which caters for eight states towards the north east is headed by the minister for development of north eastern region or you can say this north eastern council is under the administrative control of donor ministry so this difference please keep in mind and this north eastern council was a set up based on north eastern council act 1971 initially there were seven states and subsequently sikkim was a delinked from eastern council and added to north eastern council so these things please don't forget with the regard to the zonal councils union agriculture minister inaugurated lychee processing plant at mujfarpur bihar and here one important point is bihar is the top lychee producing state in the country and scientists at baba atomic research center and national research center of lychee have succeeded in treating the lychee and preserving it for 60 days at low temperature so this is lychee fruit then if you look at further union human resource development minister launched an anti ragging mobile app and this is introduced by the university grants commission look at the next one 40 crore workers from unorganized sector will be covered under various social security schemes and here already esic epfo these two organizations exist esic is employees state insurance corporation and the second one is employees provident fund organization they at present look at organized sector employees and the government is planning to include 40 crore workers from unorganized sector also under the social security schemes such as esic and epfo so esic and epfo details we will deliberate sometime in the coming lectures and here in view of completion of 3 years of government labor ministry detailed various achievements of labor ministry and here these are very important from examination perspective if you see from examination perspective items pertaining to labor ministry items pertaining to skill development these are very very important along with agriculture so please keep an eye on the details whenever you come across these ministries and here key achievements of labor ministry during the past 3 years here one important aspect is child labor prohibition and regulation 
Amendment Act. This ensures complete prohibition of employment of children below 14 years, but they are allowed in family run enterprises beyond the school hours and subsequent to this another important aspect please do not forget government ratified international labor organization convention number 138 so ILO convention 138 pertaining to prohibition of employment of children so that convention was signed then second one is adolescents are prohibited to work in hazardous occupations this was also brought and subsequent to this ILO convention 182 was also ratified so from examination perspective two things please do not forget ILO conventions 138 which prohibits child labor ILO convention 182 which prohibits employment in the hazardous occupations were ratified recently by India and another important aspect is Maternity Benefit Amendment Act 2017 which increased maternity benefit to women from 12 weeks to 26 weeks for two surviving children. Then another important aspect is Payment of Wages Amendment Act enables the employers to pay the wages to their employees either by cash or by check or by crediting to the bank account this was brought so as to facilitate or you can say increasing the digital transactions and if you go further here this is very important government brought the shram suvitha portal shram suvitha portal is for effective compliance and ease of doing business and at the same time Labor Ministry is also implementing the National Career Service Project. National Career Service Project is basically bringing employers on one side or you can say job givers on one side, job seekers on the other side. So this platform National Career Service, this is monitored by the Ministry of Labor and at the same time the Labor and Employment Minister also said that the Ministry is working on codification of existing labor laws into four labor codes. What are they? Labor codes on wages, industrial relations, social security and welfare, occupational safety and working conditions. So, this is another important aspect. In future, you can expect four labor codes, right? So, existing labor laws will be coded into four labor codes. Right, and the next important aspect is rehabilitation of bonded labor scheme, financial assistance for rehabilitation of bonded labor increased from rupees twenty thousand to rupees one lakh per adult male beneficiary, and at the same time for the children, including orphans or those rescued from forced begging rings, the rehabilitation package is increased to rupees two lakh. And another most important aspect of Labour Ministry is Pradhan Mantri Rojgar Protsahan Yojana. This Pradhan Mantri Rojgar Protsahan Yojana is to incentivize employers. What is the meaning of employer? If I am working with Reliance Industries, Reliance Industries is the employer, I am the employee. So, to promote employment, what the government has taken the decision is it is incentivizing the employers or you can say job givers by paying 8.33 percent of EPS contribution. So, here 12 percent is the total contribution. So, for the new employment for a period of 3 years out of 12 percent, this 8.33 percent under EPS, EPS is employees pension system. So, under employees pension system, under Pradhan Mantri Rojgar Prochahan Yojana, for the first three years, when new employment is created, out of 12 percent, 8.33 percent contribution will be given by the government. And another important aspect is, for the textile apparel and made up sector, for the textile sector, government will pay additionally 
it is 3.67 percent also. So, total 12 percent will be paid for textile sector, whereas for other sectors 8.33 percent of EPS contribution will be paid by the government. Most important for the new employment, another important aspect only for a period of 3 years. So, please understand about Pradhan Mantri Rojgar Protsahan Yojana. This is very, very important. Right, friends, let us move on. The Prime Minister visited Berlin for the fourth intergovernmental consultations. Both the countries signed 12 agreements and please look into this. This is Germany and if you go further, Ministry of Drinking Water and Sanitation launched a fresh national campaign titled Darwaza Band. That means please close the door. What is the meaning of Darwaza Band? Basically, in rural areas, the problem is people will have toilets, but the men have got the habit of going out for nature's call. Please understand carefully. The house has got a toilet, but men have got the habit of going outside into the fields for nature's call. So, as to prevent that open defecation, this Darwasa Band program was started by the Ministry of Drinking Water and Sanitation under Swachh Bharat Mission and it was launched in the presence of Amitabh Bachchan and it is the project supported by World Bank. So, these things please do not forget. There was a Band program started by the iconic actor Amitabh Bachchan, supported by World Bank and it is designed to encourage behavioral change in men who have toilets but are not using them. It was launched in Maharashtra and is being rolled out countrywide, right? So, the government stated within three years number of people defecating in the open came down from 55 crores to 35 crores. Our population is around 130 crores, please do not forget, right. So, this is the picture indicating the launch of Darwaza Band. Then Ministry of Earth Sciences is going to launch Deep Ocean Mission by January 2018. And another important aspect is National Institute of Oceanography. This is in Goa, please do not forget. And India was the first country in the world to have been given the pioneer area for exploration of deep sea mineral that is polymetallic nodules in the central Indian Ocean Basin in 1987, right. Then if you go further. Union Minister for Communication stated that India Mobile Congress 2017, this is a country's first and the biggest platform to bring together all the stakeholders from the domain of information and communication technology and this will be held in September 2017. Look at the next one, five MOUs or agreements were exchanged during the visit of our Prime Minister to Russia. And one important aspect is a general framework agreement for the construction of the third stage of Kudankulam nuclear power plant. When you look at Kudankulam nuclear power plant, two things do not forget. This is assisted by Russia. Second one is this is in Tamil Nadu, right. And another thing is the contract between Russian Railways and Ministry of Railways on the preparation of justification for implementation of high speed rail service between Nagpur and Sikindrabad section. And the Prime Minister addressed global business community in Germany. And two things I would like to tell you here. The Prime Minister mentioned India's participation as partner country in the Hanover Messi Fair. Hanover Messi Fair is one of the largest trade fairs and this Hanover Messi Fair is being conducted in Germany. So, it is one of the world's largest trade fairs. And second important point is India is implementing a strategic market entry support program which is known as MIIM. What is MIIM? MIIM is Make in India Metal Stand. Metal Stand is the name given to small and medium enterprises. 
in Germany. So, this world please do not forget and at the same time Hanover Messi, right and this is Germany we have already seen and these are the four countries which the Prime Minister visited, Russia, Germany, France and Spain. If you go further, Prime Minister held talks with Mariano Rajoy in Madrid, Spain and the Prime Minister invited Spanish participation in the Smart Cities Initiative. If you go further, government launched annual performance appraisal report for Group PA officers online most important. This annual performance appraisal report is regular feature every year, but the point here to note is it is made online and now this APARs would be generated and transmitted online to the concerned officers and the name of the program please do not forget that is a Sparrow. Sparrow is the name of the program for online annual performance appraisal report for group A officers, right. Then the base year of the index of 8 core industries is revised, base year is revised, weightages are revised, these two things are very important. All of you are familiar, recently the base year for wholesale price index and IIP was revised to 2011-12, accordingly the base year for this 8 core industries, you can say these 8 core industries forms around 40 percent of total index of industrial production. To be specific, they form 40.27 percent. Previously, they constitute around 38 percent or so. So, the new figure, please do not forget, this 8 core industries form 40.27 percent in the IIP and another important aspect is electricity generation data includes that from renewable energy sources also this is most important point and another thing is now the weightages are given on pro rata basis to the combined weight of core industries equal to 100 previous weightages were bifurcated which makes up 38 percent of IIP and these weightages are blown up to make them 100. So, taking the 8 core industries together as 100, if you calculate, you get these weightages. So, most important, based on their weightages in overall core industries, refinery products has got highest weightage of 28.04 percent. Please understand carefully from examination perspective. Now, with the change of base year from 2004-5 to 11-12, the revised 8 core industries have a combined weight of 40.27 percent in the IIP. And another important point is, now refinery products have got the highest weightage followed by electricity. So, refinery products topmost weightage 28.04 percent then electricity 19.85 percent and if you go to the least weightage that is a fertilizers which has got just 2.63 percent and please do not forget these are the weightages which are calculated treating core industries as 100 and at the same time do not forget the total weightage of core industries in IIP constitutes 40.27 percent, these things are very important. Look at the next one, Asian Development Bank and the Punjab National Bank signed 100 million dollar loan to be guaranteed by the government of India basically for solar rooftop systems on industrial and commercial buildings and here I would like to tell you two points. All of you are familiar with the total capacity of solar generation by 2022 which is 100 gigawatt or you can say 1 lakh megawatt out of this 1 lakh megawatt most important aspect is 40 percent or you can say 40 gigawatt is through rooftop. So, the 40,000 megawatt capacity is to be created through 
rooftop systems on commercial as well as industrial buildings across the country. This is most important aspect, please do not forget. And the next one is the President of India led the foundation stone of Drivers Training Institute and a secondary school under Smart Gram Initiative. So, from examination perspective, this is Smart Gram Initiative, please do not forget. This is the brainchild of the President. Initially, 5 villages in Haryana were selected and they are being extended to 100 villages and existing resources will be utilized. So, if someone talks about this Smart Gram Initiative, this is the initiative of the President of India, right? The Prime Minister addressed the plenary session of St. Petersburg International Economic Forum. So, the other name for this is Russian Davos. All of you are familiar with annual Davos summit in Switzerland. Similarly, this has got name of Russian Davos and here another important aspect is India is a guest country at SPIEF this year and Prime Minister Modi is the guest of honor and the theme of the plenary is achieving a new balance on the global stage. So, it is an annual Russian business event for the economic sector which has been held in St. Petersburg since 1997, right? So, this is very important and if you look at the place St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg is in this part of Russia, very close to Baltic Sea and here three countries are known as Baltic countries, please do not forget, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. So, these three countries here are known as Baltic countries. Quite often in examinations, you come across Baltic countries, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. These three are known as Baltic countries and St. Petersburg is towards the western part of Russia and it is on the coast of Baltic Sea and this St. Petersburg summit was held recently and our Prime Minister was the guest of honor for SPIEF which is also known as Russian Davos and before going ahead, the Prime Minister unveiled various steps taken or you can say the Prime Minister addressed the SPIEF and stated various achievements of the government. You can go through this slide. Next one is Shashi Shekhar Vempati was appointed as a Chief Executive Officer of Prasar Bharti and how the Chief Executive Officer is selected for Prasar Bharati. This is selected by the committee headed by the Honorable Vice President and consisting of Chairman Press Council of India and the President's nominee. If you go further, the government stated that soil health cards helped in increasing the productivity and reducing the cost of production as per the initial analysis. What is meant by soil health card scheme? Please look into this. This card provides information to farmers. This soil health card provides information to farmers on the nutrient status of their soil. This is very important. Second one is it also gives recommendations on appropriate dosage of nutrients for improving the soil health and its fertility, right? So, the farmers use fertilizers accordingly. So, that is the main purpose of soil health card. And in our country, total 14 crore soil health cards are to be given. And out of 14 crore soil health cards, already 8 crore cards have been distributed. Right, So, this is important information about soil health card and government says as per the initial reports, there is a reduction of around 16 to 25 percent in the cost of paddy farming and at the same time, there is 10 to 25 percent increase in the production of paddy. So, because of the implementation of the soil health card scheme, the cost of farming reduced and at the same time, productivity increased. What exactly the aim of soil health card scheme? Right? Let us go ahead. The Prime Minister presented over 100 volumes of 
Urga Kanjur to Jampa donor, head priest, some Buddhist temple in St. Petersburg. And from examination perspective, one thing please don't forget, this Urga Kanjur, this is the sacred Tibetan Buddhist text. This is one important point. And in the year 1955, Professor Raghu Veera brought it to India. It is a complete set of 104 volumes containing the catalogue, right. So, this was presented and Urga Kanjur is the sacred Buddhist, Tibetan Buddhist text. Please do not forget. The coordination com empowered committee of major mineral producing states. Please do not forget. This meeting is meant for preparing the states for electronic auction of mineral blocks for 2017-18. And here two things please do not forget. There is one program, Pradhan Mantri Khanij Kshetra Kalyan Yojana. And at the same time, there is a creation of district mineral foundations. So, district mineral foundations are to be created after the MMDR Amendment Act of 2015. And if you look at Pradhan Mantri Khani Chikshetra Kalyan Yojana, the main purpose is to implement various governmental and welfare projects in mining affected areas that complement existing schemes of the central and state government. And exactly for looking at the welfare of the mining affected people, this district mineral foundations are created. So, district mineral foundations, how do they get money? There is mechanism of getting money through this. So, for the new mining leaseholders who get through auctions, 10 percent is to be paid through royalty and 30 percent of the existing mine holders prior to the implementation of this MMDR Amendment Act, that means prior to January 2015, the existing mine holders have to pay 30 percent as royalty to district mineral foundations. And for the new lease holders after January 2015, 10 percent is to be paid. And this is basically to be used for the welfare of the people, right. So, these things do not forget. One is Pradhan Mantri Khanij Kshetra Kalyan Yojana and the second one is District Mineral Foundation. And if you look at the next one, Minister for Social Justice stated that AIDS and assisted living devices were distributed to 1266 senior citizens during a camp on Rashtriya Vayoshri Yojana. And here Rashtriya Vayoshri Yojana. Three, four things please do not forget. This is basically intended for senior citizens. Senior citizens means those who crossed 60 years of age. If they are having any disability, then this physical assisted devices will be given. So, assisted devices will be given for the senior citizens. Second point is they must be below poverty line. And third important point is the necessary devices will be given in mission mode by conducting various camps. That is third important point. And the organization which looks at giving these equipments or assisted devices is Alimco, Artificial Limbs Manufacturing Corporation, Alimco. Artificial Limbs Manufacturing Corporation. This is under the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. So, when someone is talking about this Rashtriya Vayoshri Yojana, these four points please do not forget. Then solid waste management in Delhi beside the adjoining areas has taken greater leaps with the launch of segregation of municipal solid waste. And here two things do not forget. Government recently notified solid waste management rules and in the country, Tirunelveli in Tamil Nadu is the only city so far to have ensured 100 percent segregation of solid waste at source. So, at solid waste this is to be segregated and now this segregation of municipal solid waste at the source like households, hotels, restaurants. This was started in Delhi and adjoining areas. 
right. So, if you go further, this is solid waste management rules of 2016, here segregation of waste is mandatory and another important aspect is this is applicable beyond municipal areas like railways, airports, defense, census towns, notified industrial townships and another important aspect is generators of waste have to segregate them into wet, dry and hazardous. Please look into this picture, wet waste, dry waste, hazardous waste and here another important aspect is generator has to pay user fee to waste collector and spot fine will be imposed for littering and non-segregation. So, there are several responsibilities. Similarly, there are responsibilities on new townships, group housing societies, gated communities. At the same time, the developers of SCJs, industrial estates should earmark at least 5 percent of the total area or at least 5 plots or sheds for recovery and recycling facility. So, if you see the examination perspective minutely, so please keep in mind these figures, right. If you go further, the Prime Minister held discussions with the French President Emmanuel Macron in Paris and the Prime Minister described the protection of environment as an article of faith for Indians and a centuries old tradition, right. So, please look into this. This is France and one important point about France is France has got a coastline towards Mediterranean Sea as well as Atlantic. Similarly, another country is Spain. So, in Europe, France as well as Spain, these two countries have got coastline towards both the Mediterranean Sea as well as Atlantic Ocean. This is very important and in addition to these two countries, if you look at Africa, Morocco is the country which has got coastline of both the Mediterranean and Atlantic. These things please do not forget. Then Ministry of Home Affairs highlighted achievements of Ministry of Home Affairs during the past three years. It stated that lowest insurgency incidents during the past 20 years in Northeast. And if you look at the achievements, the first one is Samadhan. Samadhan is the doctrine devised by the Ministry of Home Affairs for fighting left wing extremism. That is one important point. And another important aspect is Prime Minister's development package. This Prime Minister's development package pertains to Jammu and Kashmir. Please do not forget. And most important aspect is Interstate Council. So, the government says 11th meeting of Interstate Council was held after a gap of 10 years. So, Interstate Council is as per article 263 of the constitution, please do not forget. Interstate Council, we will discuss about it in future. So, Interstate Council is as per article 263 of the constitution and crime and criminal tracking networks and systems project, it is nearing completion. So, what is the purpose of CCTNS project? CCTNS project is integration of data of police stations. So, here Various states or union territories, FIR data will be shared, right. So, integration of various police station records across the country is the main purpose of CCTNS project, crime and criminal tracking networks and systems project. Then one more point is integrated check posts at Raksal as well as Jogbani. So, Raksal, Jogbani, these two are the places in Bihar and this is the border between India and Nepal. If you go further, cargo terminal at integrated check post to Petropole, please do not forget, Petropole, Benapole border is between India and Bangladesh, Petropole is in India, Benapole is in Bangladesh and foundation stone was laid for ICP at Dauki in Meghalaya. So, this is Dauki, this is in Meghalaya, this is the border between Bangladesh and India, please do not forget. So, these things are very important. So, these are the achievements listed by the Ministry of Home Affairs. Here, two, three things very important. One is Samadhan, one is a CCTNS project 
another one is interstate council. So, we will throw some light in future on interstate council and if you look at further here national disaster management plan was released and the plan covers all phases of disaster management, prevention, mitigation, response and recovery. Another important point from examination perspective, Sendai framework all of you are familiar with. Under Sendai framework, there are four priority areas as far as disaster is concerned. The four areas are one is prevention, second one is mitigation, then third one is response, fourth one is recovery. These things do not forget and at the same time the government also stated that Bharat Kavir, what is this program? This is web portal and mobile application, the name is Bharat Kavir. The purpose is it is IT based platform, the objective is willing donors can contribute towards the families of the brave soldiers who lost their lives for the country. So, Bharat K. Veer portal, please do not forget, this is also important from examination perspective, right. So, these are the achievements of Ministry of Home Affairs and Niti Aayog highlighted initiatives during the past two and a half years. It is the premier policy think tank of government of India and it is fostering the spirit of cooperative federalism and if you see the achievements. The Niti Aayog says that it is in the process of preparing 15 year vision document and 7 year strategy document, 3 year action plan. So, the 5 year plans will no more be in existence. The last 12th 5 year plan ended on 31st March. Now, Niti Aayog is looking at this 15 year vision document, 7 year strategy document. 3 year action plan. So, these things are very important and Niti Aayog consulted states on 3 critical reforms. These 3 are important to as far as agriculture is concerned. One is agricultural marketing reforms and this ENAM is one example where the agricultural marketing is taking new leaps. Then felling and transit laws for the trees produced in private land and the second one is felling and transit laws for a tree produce grown in private land. Third one is agricultural land leasing, right. So, these things important if you go further, various things I have given here, please go through them. Niti Aayog has developed the first ever agriculture marketing and farmer friendly reforms index. So, where the states will be ranked from 0 to 100. So, this agriculture, marketing and farmer friendly reforms index and another important point is Niti Aayog recommended the scrapping of Medical Council of India. Already Supreme Court mandated overseeing committee is there and now Niti Aayog recommended National Medical Commission in place of Medical Council of India, right. So, these are some of the achievements highlighted by Niti Aayog and Niti Aayog also listed that it launched two incentive schemes, Lucky Grahak Yojana, Dizzy Dhanvyapar Yojana and Niti Aayog is behind the implementation of Atal Innovation Mission. So, here under Atal Innovation Mission, one is Atal Tinkering Labs. What is the purpose of Atal Tinkering Labs? These are to foster creativity and scientific temper in students by establishing 500 Atal Tinkering Labs in schools across the country. So, to inculcate the scientific temper among the student community, this Atal Tinkering Labs are proposed. Then Atal Incubation Centers will also be provided and the government will give support of rupees 10 crore and capacity building for installing this Atal incubation centers, right. And GDP growth for 2016-17 was recorded at 7.1 percent, but the growth in the fourth quarter that is January to March, growth in the fourth quarter was just 6.1 percent, right. And now, India lost the tag of 
world's fastest growing economy as china grew by 6.9% in the same quarter then 18th annual india russia summit was held in st petersburg and remaining things i have given here you can go through them with this let us conclude this week's press information bureau it is quite lengthy because of various achievements highlighted by various ministries in view of completion of 3 years of the present government but from examination perspective these are very very important so that's why i have taken sufficient time to cover all these aspects right friends with this let us conclude press information bureau and please do join for why and how have a nice day thank you